You might have seen this posted on Facebook over the last week. It comes from a tweet by Noah Mickelson, who works for Huffington Post. Hold up for just a second. Oh, these HuffPo editorial directors are just so down with the street lingo, I love it. Before we continue fighting about how Jesus feels about the legality of tearing kids from their parents, can we back up and discuss the fact that the Bible isn't the document we're supposed to be consulting in order to run our country? We're not supposed to be consulting the Bible in order to run the country? Okay, three questions. Why not? Says who? And what are you going to do about it if we do? The implication here is that we're supposed to be consulting the Constitution instead of the Bible, but of course, there's no reason we can't consult both. Propagandists and demagogues always traffic in false dichotomies. The phrasing suggests secularists are trusting us to use the honor system not to commit the thought crime of letting religious convictions taint our political decision-making processes, whether those decisions concern which politicians a voter supports or which laws those politicians draft. Their trust is in the worst possible faith, however. They don't compel us by force only because they lack the means to do so. After all, taking their false dichotomy to its logical conclusion, any political opinion informed by religious beliefs contravenes the Constitution in intent, and any law informed by religious values contravenes the Constitution in act. Despite the fact that Christians, Jews, Muslims, and Buddhists are all free to bring the values of their multiplicity of religious traditions to bear on the multiplicity of public policies in the democratic forum, the existence of any policy informed by any religious tradition is, in the eyes of secularists, theocracy. The platitude, laws shouldn't be based on religious beliefs, might sound anodyne enough on the surface, but keep scratching at it and its true totalitarian implications shine through. In fact, keep scratching at any of its proponents, and the expected blather about talking snakes and invisible sky fairies invariably comes gushing forth. How can atheists, who view us and our convictions with such contempt, trust us to police ourselves? When the atheist is free to draw from the moral landscape or the god delusion when fashioning their political beliefs, how can they trust us in good faith to tie our hands behind our own backs? How can atheists, who view me not as a rational agent with contrary but valid concerns, but rather as a passive, unknowing host for malignant mind viruses, consider me an equal participant in their democracy. In the minds of these people, the toleration of religion in the public sphere that has sustained our country for 240 years is no longer good enough. Instead, we should adopt the view of religion as a threat to the polity that was shared by anti-theist regimes from the reign of terror to the USSR. This is why, when an atheist demands that you keep your religion out of politics, it is imperative that you not yield an inch. There is no concession you can make that would be adequate to satisfy them, short of your total disavowal of your religious beliefs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.